Hey everyone, welcome back to the Casual Watch Review channel. I'm not in my normal set, as you can tell. This year, I've just been trying to get a set sorted out. Typically, I filmed in my living room, but with the echo, etc., I need to find a more permanent solution. This year has been kind of the year of micro brands. We're only in February and I've reviewed quite a few, some that have divided opinion. So thank you to everyone that leaves your comments in the comments section down below and the honest feedback that you give me on these watches. Now, I'm pretty excited about this micro brand. It comes from Dave at Detroit Mint who is actually based in Detroit. This watch is based on a vintage bullhead chronograph watches from the 60s and 70s. And the reason why I wanted to review it is because ever since I watched the new Tarantino film, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, if you've not seen it, you've got to watch it. It's a little bit long, but the ending totally makes it up for it. If you've seen it, you'll know exactly what I mean. In that film, the star of the show for me wasn't Brad Pitt, it wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio, it was Brad Pitt's character Cliff Booth, his bullhead chronograph watch. And I've been obsessed with that. In the film, it was a citizen watch. This one is a seagull-based movement. This is a prototype version, so when I review it, a few things will change. And actually, before we jump into the review, if this is your first time watching one of my uploads, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Also, there's a new podcast out as well, more longer form content if you're interested in hearing me a bit more raw and uncut and uh, kind of speaking off the cuff. Let's flip the camera around, let's dive into the review, and at the end, leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this watch. Let's flip the camera around and dive straight in. This is a brand that is based in Detroit, although the watches are assembled at different parts of the world. Although he does, Dave, who owns this, is very keen on making predominantly US-made watches. Now, why am I so excited about this watch. Well, I have been obsessed with the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood film, the new Tarantino film. In that film, if you've seen it, you'll know there's a very distinctive watch. It's a citizen bullhead chronograph. The scene with Brad Pitt, the watch is almost a character in itself, and I just love that. And then ever since then, I've been obsessed with these citizen bullhead chronographs. The only problem is, is they're very hard to find in good condition, I think. I, I've been researching them for a while, and I know particularly issues with them being rebuilt. So here's the watch. It comes in this nice wooden box, which reminds me very much of a old-school pencil case or maybe something you keep your dominoes in, but a nice touch anyway. We have Detroit Mint inlaid in there. Opening up. Here we can see the watch and straight off you can see it's got that real nice vintage bullhead chronograph look to it. Very classic, very nicely proportioned. This one is the stainless steel, the highly posh stainless steel version. I believe there might also at, at one point be a brushed version of this case in steel and then also a gold version which is going to be polished brass the kickstarter is down below if you want to check them out they're ranging from about 250 to uh, 300 dollars depending at what point you get in on the kickstarter now we're zoomed in we can get a really nice look at that sunburst dial the panda color scheme here the leading seconds at the bottom the chronograph one at the top the main second hand is the chronograph hand so if we just set that off here we can see that going around very smooth with that seagull movement now this is a manual wine seagull movement it does say automatic on here the reason that he's put automatic on here is this is a prototype so he was playing around with certain things uh the, the way that the text would appear on the dial but this will likely be a manual wind chronograph when it comes to full production using a seagull movement. The only thing to say about this seagull movement is that the second hand is non-hacking. So when you go to set the time, so let's just pull this out here, you'll notice that I can set the time, but the second hand still moves. We've seen this seagull movement on another watch that I reviewed that was kind of a retro inspired watch. The, he's done a really good job of the case, feels very solid, the pushes feel solid. The crown as well, he's going to put more of a knurling effect on this so it's easier to grab. 
And on the back here, as mentioned before, this is going to be a transparent case back. So you can see that seagull movement. They are quite pretty, the seagull movements. When I was chatting to him, uh, Dave, he did say that original idea was put the Seiko movement in here, the new Seiko chronograph movement, but apparently they're quite hard to come by at the moment. And then we, we're going to have a signed buckle as well on the on the production model. There you can have a quick look at the thickness. While we're here, let's have a look at the measurements. So we've got a 20 millimeter lug width. Here's the case measurement and then the lug to lug. And of course, with the crown being at the top, you've not got a crown measurement on the side here. Looking closer at the dial, we've got applied indices. We've got a tachyograph along the inner Reholt dial here. And then we've got the Detroit Mint logo. And then the chronograph hands, which are in this really nice red. The strap is nicely recessed into the case. And the case has a curvature to it as well. Now, this, I thought this might be a bit uncomfortable to wear just because there's, because of this curvature, but it absolutely isn't. It's an extremely comfortable watch to wear. I'll show you a wrist shot in a bit. Uh, the only thing, maybe a slight improvement would be if, if at some point it does get that seagull movement and there is hacking. That would be the only improvement I can say on this watch. So here we have it on my 7.2 inch wrist pretty comfortable it is it does have some depth to it i think it would be even thicker if it was an automatic so nice to see that it's a manual wind a manual wind doesn't bother me at all i had my speedmaster for so long that, that manual wind that it's quite nice to give it a little twist and, and top it up each time but there it is on the stock strap that comes with it on the the kickstarter campaign let's just give it a little polish here to get my fingerprints off it now, if anyone's seen the film, you'll know that not only is the watch very distinctive, but the strap that Brad Pitt wears the watch on is pretty distinctive as well. It's a cuff style strap. Now, as soon as I knew that this watch was coming in for review, I reached out to my favourite watch strap maker. That's Mikola from Man Cave Leather. And I asked him whether he could recreate the strap from the film now this isn't one that's in his current production line he's made this from scratch from the photos that i sent him from some of the promotional pictures that were taken for the film and he's done an awesome job of it it looks almost identical to the one from the film i'm really liking this watch on the cuff strap looks very similar to brad pitt's from the, the film extremely comfortable it doesn't add a lot of extra bulk to it unfortunately this cuff strap isn't available for the kickstarter but i had to show it you on this watch if you guys are interested if you do buy this watch and you are interested in a cuff strap let me uh, know reach out to me at the casual watch view at gmail.com or you can you can contact Nicola directly below but yeah, so I, I know I'd promised Dave as well that I was going to show this on a cuff strap. I also promised him that I would try and take this watch up to L.A. because I I live about an hour south of L.A. And I was going to try and get some shots of this watch by uh, the various uh, filming locations. But unfortunately, timing, etc. If I do manage to get hold of a production one of these uh, when Dave has built them, I will certainly do a follow-up review and we'll try and capture some of the, the filming locations. I'll throw a couple of shots up here. So overall, very solid design. Solid. I think for a micro brand, he's done a very good job of this as well. He does have some background in machining and engineering. He has a business where he does um, uh, engineering and it really shows in the attention to detail on this watch. The printing on the dial is sharp. Those applied indices very retro the case the shape of the case i think he's done an excellent job of this uh quite honest as always this is my opinion let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below i'll leave a link to the kickstarter if you're interested in finding out any more and then this watch is going off to another reviewer this uh prototype so we'll s you'll probably see it appear on one of the other channels as well so if you are interested in this watch you're going to have a couple of different reviews to check out so a big thanks to uh, Dave for sending me this watch in for review. 
I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time on the Casual Watch Review channel. Thanks guys, bye.